We now go to semi-finals, not a final, semi-final number one in the men's 200. And here, starting in lane eight, is Kenny Benerick. So far, he has looked very good through the rounds. He ran the 100 here and finished in fourth in the final. And this is Fred Curley, who was also expected to run the 400 meters here. He's number six all time in the 400, but competed in the 100 and made the team. What will he do in the 200? Here's the full field for you. There's Matthew Bowling, the youngster from Texas. Matthew starting in lane seven. Back up to you. With Sean Merritt, the three time Olympian. He's in four right in the middle. Here's Isaiah Young. He'll start out of lane six. He made the semifinals in the 100. This is his better event. Ran a season's best in his opening round heat. He's going to need another one to qualify for this final. Early on the outside, he'll be in nine. Top three go to the final, and that's tomorrow. I talked to Fred's coach. He's been struggling with a little bit of an ankle injury, and that's why he's a little bit conservative on the turn, and he's planning to really hammer home here. We'll see if he has anything and able to catch this field. Kenny Benerick. Kenny Benerick is looking good. Fred Curley is coming back. Not quite close enough. Fred Curley may have to rely on time. Isaiah Young with a good run, but it was Kung Fu Kenny Benerick. 19.90 officially now for Benerick. So he has booked his spot into the final. Hard to run down 19.90. I think he gave himself a little bit too much work to do, and Kenny Benerick looked really good through that run. So you see Benerick second from the outside. He went right by Fred Curley. And Curley spotted these guys a little bit too much distance, trying to rely on that strength to run them down. But Benerick, Young, and Hudson were the first three across the line, leaving Curley on the outside. As you said, Lee, having to rely on time if he's going to make the final. And we'll only know that at the conclusion of the next semi-final, but there is Kenny Benerick. Really good run, Fred Curley. He's already made the team, by the way. He's going in the 100. So we'll see if he makes the 200 final based on his time. Well done, Andrew Hudson, following Benerick and Young home. There's one more semi to come, and it features the world champion in the 200. There he is. Lee, lots of celebrating going on, and rightly so. One semi-final down, one to go in the men's 200 hundred meters on a very warm uh, triple digit evening here in the Pacific Northwest it has been very hot it's been hard work but it hasn't stopped the amazing times and I don't think it's gonna stop this man here he's ready to perform the world champion Noah Lyles usually when he's doing this pre-race he's ready to go the world champion tried to do a double at these trials only finished seventh in the hundred so here is his last remaining chance at making Team USA in Tokyo in an individual event. Also in this heat, his brother Josephus. I know they're excited, but I was more concerned. How is their mom, Keisha, feeling in the stand? So I texted her, and she said, I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. This is surreal for me. When they were in the eighth grade, they both said they wanted to be Olympians, and here they are with an opportunity to do just that. She says it's been a long road for them, full of adversity. But here we are, teamwork. Addo, what do you make of Noah starting in lane eight? Is that going to suit him or not? No, it's perfect for him because the strength of his race is the final 100, so this, this gets him off the turn quickly. Let's turn to run in lane 8. On the inside of him, though, two very fast youngsters in lanes 5 and 6, Terence Laird and Arian Knighton. Terence Laird, who won the 100 at the NCAAs and second in the 200, opted to not run the 100 here and focus on the 200. I think it was a really good decision for him. He's looked really good through the rounds. And this guy in lane six broke Usain Bolt's world under 18 200 meter record. He turned pro, and that's the only reason why he will not get credit for having broken Noah Lyle's high school national record. He ran 20.04 in his opening round heat. He's only 17, but I guarantee you he is going to factor in this race. He's in lane six. He's already got this guy's attention, Noah Lyles. <laughs> Top three go through, there's Lyle second from the right. And if Lyle second from the outside can be in contention around this turn, which he is, I'm not worried about the second half of this race. That's his strength. Here comes Arian Knighton, though. The 17-year-old in the middle of the track. 
The 17 year old's going to beat the world champ as he eases up and goes through in a 1988. My goodness. And the wind is legal. That would be another world under 18 record once it's ratified. So remember five years ago when Noah Lyles came to the Olympic trials as a high schooler and he was beating all these pros. Turnabout is fair play, right? Now he's got a high schooler running him down in the straightaway. How many people have ever seen run down Noah Lyles in the straightaway? I know it's the semifinals. Everybody's taking it easy. But that young high schooler, Knighton, is here to not play any games. Noah Lyles ran a fabulous turn, Sonia, and then the high schooler ran him down. The fourth fastest man of all time at this distance who actually worked harder on that turn, so I thought he would easily handle the final 100. But Knighton had other plans and looked Otto really comfortable. He's looking at the clock <laughs> as he's crossing the finish line. I don't know. It's going to be a race in the final. 17 years of age. You're in the Olympic trial semifinal for the first time ever. You run down Noah Lyles and 10 meters from the, from the line, you're looking at the clock. That's confidence. Pre-race, pre-race, he said, I'm going to go hard in the first 150 and dial it back and save a bit for the big race. <laughs> if that's <It> saving <laughs> a bit, look out. And through goes Arian Knight, Noah Lyles and Terence Laird. Let's hear from Lewis Johnson after a special second semi. Well, I think Noah had had word with uh, Arian before about what he's supposed to do after a race, but he doesn't seem to get... Last time, that they wanted to talk to you, man. And he was like, no, no, no. I was like, look, when you win your heats, they're going to want to talk to you. You're young, you got a story to tell. Bro, they want. Right. They want to hear it. All right, well, let's talk about you. From shadow boxing in lane eight out here to finishing in second, what do you make of this semi, and how, what needs to change to get you to make sure you make this team in the final? To be honest, Honest, I was happy with the semi. Okay. I did exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, Arian just had the same plan. Okay. And, uh, you know, he was behind me, but that's never an excuse. So, you know, I'm just getting ready for the final now. I think people would like to know what it's like to run with your brother Josephus and your mom watching nervously in the stands. <laughs> it's exciting. I always love it. I told him before, you know, I've never seen a better duo. So we're going to come out here and we're both going to give it our all. All right, Noah. See you in the final. See you. Thank you. Unfortunately, brother Josephus didn't make it through on time. Fred Curley, Kyrie King.